doing? Security alert. Multiple synthetic labor units have been compromised. Hey, get away from there! Deflector shield down in all sectors of- In 2385, a subroutine within the systems of droids that would soon go rogue activates. This subroutine created by the Zot Vosh would cause the droids to go postal and devastate both Mars and Starfleet's shipbuilding capacity. The incident would stretch Starfleet thin and the Federation would cease all attempts to save Romulan refugees fleeing from certain death within their own borders. It would also have the added impact of the Federation becoming increasingly isolationist. Half of them never wanted to rescue the Romulans in the first place. And the rest are... are just... frightened. In truth, many within the Council had never really wanted to help the Romulans anyway. They were the enemy after all. This event just ensured that conservative elements would gain more control within the Council. However, the question really does become, was the Federation right in its decision? And just as curiously, was this really outside of how the Federation Council operated? The more I watch Star Trek, uh, especially The Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, the more I begin to wonder if we aren't just given a pie-in-the-sky example of what the heroes strive for within the government, and not what it actually was. When looking at The Next Generation, we need consider no more than the measure of a man and the drumhead to see how a lot of elements would work behind the scenes. What was really occurring with the Federation. Well, it's easy to be a saint in paradise. And I'm sure that in the minds of many viewers, you already hear the words Cisco said about Earth and paradise. When we look at how Starfleet Command and indeed the Federation itself operated, they generally were pretty conservative, pretty insular in their beliefs. They rarely wanted to expend resources if there was no gain. Though, to be fair, it would seem the only thing not commonly considered to be a conservative trait with them is their penchant for not wanting to go to war, willing to sell out their own citizens to stop it even. So, considering the past with them and that Starfleet had just fought an interstellar war that cost quite a bit not 10 years ago, it's not surprising that the Council would refuse to continue to assist the Romulans. Hell, before the Mars attack, 14 species were threatening to leave the Federation. Which, as an aside, it's really interesting the way she phrases that. So it's 14 species, is that like 3 member worlds or is that 16 member worlds? The fact that she calls them species makes me wonder if it's done in a way to make it seem a lot more grandiose than it is. Maybe all 14 of these species were on one planet, and saying one member world was willing to leave isn't going to get the emphasis that she wanted. I Again, it doesn't matter, it's just interesting. Irregardless of how many member worlds that was, it did show that the Federation was fracturing over the discussion. If we assume that the Federation still had a bit over 150 planets and that every species meant that one member world would leave, then we'd be talking about roughly 9% or so of the Federation Council. That's not exactly insubstantial. So, again, the question is, should the Federation Council have stopped its efforts to save the Romulans? And is stopping those efforts within the character for them? The fact is, and I've touched on this a bit, the Council never was the pinnacle that we were told it was. Throughout all of the series, from the original series to, as of this upload, the most recent one being, Discovery Season 3, we see that the Federation was really not the best entity. Hell, there are a couple of episodes in the original series that show that even in the Utopia, there were some questionable decisions. What's up, guys? I need your help. As many of you know, I rely on support from viewers like you to make a living. It's how I keep my two kids fed. This time of year, it gets pretty tough as views go down, and so does ad revenue. Additionally, I'm actually already in the midst of a project where I'm putting together an entire campaign on how I think a Dominion Borg War would occur. Right now, I already have an audio log out. Check in the links below to see what it's like. This project will have professionals from voice actors to full-on actors, camera crews, editors, SFX, and more. It'll include six short film animations, six live action short films, and 12 audio logs. If you want to support this and ensure the project goes through, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash lore reloaded or a member by hitting the button below. Again, patreon.com forward slash lore reloaded or hit that membership button as you see on YouTube. As little as one dollar helps more than you think. Thanks. Now back to the episode. Ow. 
Actually, the issue at stake is patriotism. You must return to your world and put an end to the commies. All it takes are a few good men. What? That nonsense is centuries behind us. But you can't deny that you're still a dangerous, savage child race. Most I agree we still were when humans wore costumes like that 400 years ago. A lot of how we see the Federation, and indeed Starfleet, comes from the next generation, if everyone is being honest. The dialogue from the crew makes us think that, well, they're perfect. But we have to consider that everyone that was in TNG was on the flagship of the Federation. These were people that were at the top of their game, the best Starfleet had to offer. The way they saw the Federation, and the way that it actually was, could be drastically different. And indeed, even watching In the Next Generation, we see some questionable things. Deep Space Nine just takes it to a whole nother level. But if all of this is true, then what is the difference in Star Trek Picard? Why does the Council's decision here to abandon the Romulans to their fateful deaths feel wrong versus when we see the Council do stuff that's just as bad? I think the difference is, is that, well, what we see in Star Trek Picard is the heroes failing. While there are episodes where they don't completely get what they want, generally the heroes of Star Trek, Starfleet officers, somehow and in some way convince others to do the right thing. Like what we see with the Leighton coup, people like Cisco would step in and say, no, this is wrong. And not only would they stop it, but they would explain why it was wrong, what needed to be done. At the end of the day, most people survived and the Federation was better for it. However, this type of scenario requires that the heroes go up against the Federation Council and all of the people's fears, if not outright bigotry, and that they're persuasive enough to change minds and that they again win. Every time Starfleet or the Council want to go in a way that we would consider a negative, Starfleet officers have to step in and do what's right. And when they don't, or they can't stop it, well, we see what happens. Star Trek Picard shows that exactly. <laughs> and hell, we know what happens when the heroes decide to do evil to achieve some type of greater good. I lied. I cheated. I bribed men to cover the crimes of other men. I am an accessory to murder, but the most damning thing of all, I think I can live with it. The more I think about it, the more I'm convinced that this is within the confines of how the Federation operates. That leads us into the next query, though. Should the Council have listened to Jean-Luc? Now, for my money, I would say yes, but I'll admit that I grew up as a kid watching The Next Generation, being told that Starfleet and its officers are the pinnacle of humanity. They put themselves in danger and overextend themselves even to help an enemy, even if it gets them killed. I think the Federation still should have assisted the Romulans, even at a reduced rate. Now, to be fair, it would make sense that Starfleet wouldn't want to do this. I use this word a lot, but it's pragmatic. The ability to build ships for Starfleet took an immeasurable hit, and the Federation was weakened to the point that a war would be devastating for them. Starfleet Command would need every vessel they had and every officer available just to keep the peace. But again, that's not the Starfleet ideal. They would put themselves on the line to save others. It's part of being an officer. It is kind of funny how, if this was any other science fiction government, how people would be okay, though. Babylon 5, Star Wars, the myriad of Battletech organizations. We would all agree that not helping made sense. It was reasonable. But again, that's the point of Star Trek to a degree, isn't it? Starfleet being suicidal to help others. That's just my opinion, at least. What's yours? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next. Lore Reloaded. Sheer fucking hubris.